Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey, tea sippers. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. And I got my girl, Emily, with me in the house. Hey, everyone. So anyways, it's been a long week. It's been so much drama, so much mess going on. And so I want to bring Emily on so we could talk about some, of, you know, a few things. Now, if you guys do not know, yesterday, Bella Hadid was trending all over social media. They are the daughters of this beautiful Dutch model. Her name is Yolanda Hadid. And basically, um, Bella and Gigi Hadid, their father, he's Muhammad Hadid, and he's from Jordan. So he's like, he's a Muslim. And so if you look at Bella, she looks just like her father. She has her father's nose and features. She's a beautiful girl, but she always felt like the ugly sister because her features were not as Eurocentric as her sister. When you look at Gigi Hadid, she's blonde, she's blue eyed, and the mother always praised her features um, because her features were more palatable, more European. They weren't as Middle Eastern. So Bella felt a lot of, you know, pressure. And so eventually she agreed to get a nose job at 14. So right now people have been dragging the hell out of Yolanda Hadid. They have been going in on her on Twitter and on social media saying that once again, this is proof that you're a bad mother because they've been calling her out for years. You used to watch the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, right? Yeah, and I I couldn't help but feel bad for just Gigi because I remember when Yolanda was first introduced and she came on, it was when she was married to uh, David Foster, and um, she uh, had introduced Gigi, and she really didn't talk a lot about Bella, but there was a lot of, it was Gigi this, Gigi that, it was all the pictures of Gigi that she had put her in modeling, very, very young. I, I could be wrong, but I think Gigi started modeling way younger than Bella. It's almost like Bella didn't start modeling till after she had plastic surgery. Yeah. And that was the thing that was kind of conflicting because initially she tried to make it seem like, oh, I didn't put my kids in modeling until they were 18. But she literally had been, she's had Bella in modeling since she was like three. Like there's conflicting audio where she'll say, oh, Bella started modeling at three. And then you see all these pictures of Bella when she was like a little girl, eight, nine, 10. And she's with some of the top agencies. But Gigi was not. Gigi definitely started after the age of 18. Now, Gigi, Gigi's the blonde. Okay, Bella's Gigi. the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Bella is the, which is really interesting because Bella now is, it seems like it's completely like the, the script's been flipped. Bella seems to be the one who's like the it girl and everybody's always clowning Gigi because after she had her daughter, um, I mean, she's still doing runways and stuff, but she just, I don't think Gigi's had as much work done, so she might be more comfortable in her skin. You know how they say, oh, one's had a glow up. Everyone's saying that Gigi had a glow down, which I totally mm-hmm. disagree. So it's almost like the flip, uh, the script has been flipped on them. Um, because Gigi, you know, she'll go on live. Uh, she's got, um, I think it's called rosacea, where, you know, her, she's got a lot of redness in her skin. It's just not perfect. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then Bella, I think it was a couple of years ago, was that Egyptian numeral thing where I, I don't know how they added up, but she was like declared the most beautiful woman according to this. Oh, I, yeah. I remember that. I did a video on that, like her and Beyonce. Yeah. Yeah, her and Beyonce. That so was it, it, Bella that was that was nominated. Yeah, so it's Bella, girl. <laughs> mm. Interesting, because I remember in that video, because I've always thought that you know both Bella and Gigi were very beautiful, but you know I mixed them up. But yeah, Gigi's the blonde. So right. when I looked at Bella, I said, okay, well I could see why they would say she's one of the most beautiful women in the world. You know, she has high cheekbones. Her eyes, her nose, very symmetrical. And I remember people in the comments section saying, no, T, how can she be considered beautiful when she's had plastic surgery? And I was like, wait, what? Bella? You know what I'm saying? Having plastic surgery? Because like I said, I've never really dug into them like that. I just assumed they were just naturally pretty girls. And so when I went to look at the before and after pictures, I said, well, damn, her face does look a lot different. But then I thought, well, maybe she was a lot younger. 
what I find very interesting is that people have been calling her out for, you know, getting her nose done for years, but she always claimed that it was because she was 13 and 14 in those pictures that are on the internet. Her face was chubbier. She's grown into her face. She's a lot older and that could all be true. So then for her to turn around and be like, oh, I got a nose job at 14. It's like, yo, people been calling out this nose job for like years and you always denied it. So I feel like in a way she's trying to be more relatable. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, no, I agree. And, um, you know, I know you and I have had a lot of conversations about all this stuff with the celebrities and the plastic surgery and, and if they've had it or should they admit it. it I feel like 14 is very young for a nose job. Um, but I, I think, you know, which I'm no expert, I don't know, but I think that Bella has had probably more done than a nose job. So I find mm -hmm. it interesting that that's the only thing she's, you know, feels comfortable talking about. But then again, you know, that's that's her and her medical history and what she wants to disclose is on her. But it is very interesting. Why now? Why would you want to come out about it now? And I know she in that article had talked about um, eating disorders and depression and, you know, uh, how she felt that she was born, you know, so lucky, you know, born into money with so many resources and she shouldn't feel depressed. And I mean, it did get really deep and, you know, I did have empathy for her, but it is interesting. Why now? Why are you coming out now disclosing all this information that you've been battling with for, you know, since you were 14? Right. And I think part of that, like for me, I'm getting euphoria tease. Like I'm starting to notice this almost like society is mirroring what we're watching on television. Euphoria is one of the most popular shows. Me and you have talked about this. And uh -huh. one of the biggest storylines in Euphoria was the drama between the two sisters, Lexi yeah. and Cassie. And, you know, Lexi was the younger sister to Cassie and Cassie was the prettier older sister, the blonde, blue eyed, big boobs. Everybody, you know, found her very attractive. And then, you know, Lexi was just, you know, the little Burnett hadn't really blossomed and come into her own yet. So I feel like it's almost like Bella is playing the role of Lexi in real life. It's like art is mirroring real life in this situation. Yeah, because Lexi became, you know, fan favorite. Everybody loved Lexi. I, every, I think everybody likes an underdog story. They find, I personally found Lexi relatable, so I get it. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, Lexi was the fan favorite. And I know a lot of times these models, they, uh, you know, they, it's almost like they have to stay trending. They have to stay in the talk. You hadn't really heard too much about either of them lately. So it's just a very interesting, the timing is interesting. I definitely get euphoria teased from it too. Yeah, that's what I get. You know, a lot of these celebrities are trying to be relatable. Even the other day we were talking about how Kylie Jenner came out and uh -huh. she's talking about her postpartum, you know, depression with her second baby. And I'm not trying to invalidate that. You know, a lot of women go through postpartum. That's something that's very real and very serious. But in the way she was talking about it on Instagram, like, yeah, you know, and I just felt like a lot of postpartum, like it just didn't even come off as like really genuine to me. I just didn't get that vibe. It's almost like this is what's cool to talk about. And let me just try and act like as regular as possible. To my postpartum moms, that postpartum has not been easy. It's not been easy. It's very hard. It's this experience for me personally has been a little harder than with my daughter. It's not easy mentally, physically, spiritually. It's just crazy. And yeah, I didn't want to just get back to life without saying that because I think we can look on the internet and, you know, for other moms going through it right now. Um, we can go on the internet and it might look a lot easier for other people and like put the pressure on us, but it hasn't been easy for me either. It's been hard and I just wanted to say that. So I didn't even think I'd make it to this workout today, but I'm here and I'm feeling better. So you got this. And, and I'm not saying that she can't have postpartum, but I think it's a lot harder for me to see her with it when she has nannies and, you know, butlers and help versus like the single mom who's raising her child or even the mother with, yeah, the father's there. And it's just between the two of them having to get up in the middle of the night and make bottles and change diapers. So I, I just don't know.
I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you on that one, too. And, um, you know, she could very well be dealing with it in her own way. But I, I personally didn't deal with postpartum. I think anytime someone has a kid, like your body obviously is going to be different and hormones and stuff. But if just say I did, I, I couldn't imagine getting on Instagram and being like, oh, Kylie's dealing with it, too. OK, if she can get through this, I can, too. I mean, what <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? Like, I don't know. I, I try not to, like you were saying, invalidate someone's feelings just because, just because you have money, I guess, doesn't necessarily mean you're happy, but mm -hmm. I, I have a hard time believing that postpartum would be the same for her, that it would be for like your average, you know, just mom, new mom. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I really, and I know I sound bitchy saying this, I kind of have a hard time finding anything that they do genuine. Mm. Yeah, it always seems like it's contrived or it's just like whatever is viral. Let me jump on it. Let me talk about it. And like I said, that's the same vibe I was getting with this whole, um, you know, Bella story, because I kind of feel like I'm glad she's being honest and she's telling her truth. But I also feel like it's kind of playing into like the whole season of Euphoria, you know, like the two sisters. And, you know, this goes on to talk about how parents play a role in this type of perception, because she said from the time she was young, she always felt, you know, uglier than her sister. It was certain things that her mother would say. And like I always tell people that European standard of beauty, there's definitely a hierarchy. Oh, you know, yeah. People don't believe that. They think, you know, just because somebody's white, that's the end of it. But that hierarchy is blonde hair, blue eyes. I mean, you had that even during Nazism, where yep. they were even trying to do, um, you know, chemical implantations and, and these crazy surgeries to make people with brown eyes to somehow turn their eyes blue. And they were blinding people with these trials that they were doing on the Jewish people. You guys can, you know, Google that information, but that is like that, that Aryan mentality. And that still holds true in a lot of countries in Europe. So being that Yolanda Hadid, um, is a Dutch woman, or I think is she's Dutch or Swedish. Uh, she's Dutch. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. And so she definitely favored and definitely geared towards the child that looked like her, the blonde hair and blue eyes. And trust and believe, I'm sure the daddy, Muhammad Hadid, got with her because, again, on the totem pole, to him, you know how sometimes they'll say, like, you know, when black men get on, they'll go and get a white girl. Yeah. But even in, in other races, that can be true where they see like a white woman with blonde hair and blue eyes is like a trophy, you know, and hope uh -huh. that, you know, their kids will come out with those features and they have a daughter that did. And so what really stuck out to me is when Bella was saying that she felt bad because she has her, her, her father's nose and she got rid of that. Like, you know, she had that Jordanian nose and now she looks a lot less ethnic. You know, so almost getting rid of that feature so that way she'd be more palatable. And that's really sad. So it just show, goes to show you that things like this doesn't just happen in the black community or Hispanic community. Um, featureism is very real, even amongst white people. Oh, yeah. I mean, even me, um, like I'm just your, your average, I guess, white person. But um, I have very, very dark eyes. I have very, very dark hair. And my whole life, people, nobody ever believes me when they're like, oh, okay, so, you know, are you, you're, they don't believe that I'm white just because I have dark hair and dark eyes. They just, that for some reason is just unheard of, which I know a lot of Irish people might, but whenever um, <clears throat> I got married and, you know, we were expecting our son, my husband has green eyes. And I don't know how many times people are like, oh, you know, maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe your baby will have your husband's pretty green eyes, you know? And I'm like, well, what the mm -hmm. fuck is wrong with my eyes, you know? <laughs> And it even was in my head, I was thinking, oh, okay, you know, well, maybe he will. Like, because, you know, when babies are born, usually their eyes are blue. When my son was born, his eyes were just brown. He didn't even have blue eyes when he was born. And you don't really think about it because I know, like, obviously, featureism and all that stuff affects so many communities in, in different ways. But it is something that definitely happens in uh, the, just that whole Eurocentric, that Aryan blonde hair, blue eyed thing is definitely something that everybody strives for I do hair for a living and I don't know how many times I've fried people's hair out of their fucking head just trying to get blonde hair and it's like sis it ain't happening you know mm -hmm. exactly and Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go.
Hey, tea sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.